Hi, I'm Gordo. Welcome back to The Rig. I wanted to show you some updates and answer some questions. So uh, let's take a look around at some stuff I've changed since you saw it last. So one big update I did is I did a water methanol injection system on the engine. That gives me some extra horsepower to work with. I've got a 16 gallon tank in there um, that I fill with windshield washer fluid. And then that gets injected into my intake air and gives me a little power and a little cooler exhaust temps. And that has really helped out with the bus being slow and underpowered. My miles per gallon on conservatively on the highway, if I'm trying to get good miles per gallon, is about 10. And my miles per gallon uh, aggressively on the highway, if I'm trying to do a lot of mileage, is about seven and a half. Top speed that I will cruise at is 75. And if I cruise at 75 for more than an hour or so, I start to feel bad. So my normal cruising speed is about 70, low 70s, 70, 72, something like that. It's fun to go to uh, auto parts stores to buy windshield washer fluid by the case. The clerk at the auto parts store is always like, oh, what do you, what? What do you, six cases? Cases is what you need of windshield washer fluid? I'm like, yeah, it's just, you know, I burn it. A lot of people on the tour video commented about how low the generator box is. And it's, yes, it is the lowest part on the bus. And yes, I do slam it into the ground fairly routinely. Yeah, it's fine. It's still there. I built the generator box in isolation before I did the major work on the bus. And my plan at that time was that I would raise the floor under the driver's seat in the cabin. That, that's basically just dead space inside. And that I would have the generator box hung higher. And then when I went to do the major work on the bus, that was just a thing that was going to take more time than I had. And I'm not not going to do it now because I would have to like rebuild the floor, the finished floor, not just the metal floor pan of the coach. I'll rebuild it at some point, maybe even soon. Until then, yeah, I slam it into the ground on dirt roads fairly often and it's fine. No big deal. <laughs> so this is the spot where in the in the tour video. Then there's a bunch of open space where I'm gonna put water tanks. Well, I did, I've done, done did put them. Here they are. I've got 30 gallons of fresh and 16 gallons of gray. The only thing that drains into the gray tank is my sink. So 16 gallons is way more than I need. This is my shower just an exterior RV shower. And that keeps all my plumbing super local. Like the fresh tank is right here. The sink is right inside right here. The shower is here. The water heater is in, inside right here. So all the plumbing is right here and it's all within sort of that little kitchen unit. I put these boxes on. I didn't build these boxes. They're six foot long semi truck underbody boxes. And then I built these aluminum fairings to go in front of and behind the boxes to make them look nice, make it all fit together. But yeah, they're just the right size to fit a milk crate. That's my water fill and dump and, you know, water maintenance stuff. Put some spare parts and some oil and odds and ends. A lot of people on the last video left comments about how everything was unlocked and I could steal it. I guess it didn't occur to those people that maybe I just didn't want to be dealing with a million padlocks on camera. Yeah, I own padlocks. Yeah, I know that tools are worth money and people might want to steal them, so I don't let that happen. Another thing that a lot of people talked about in uh, the comments on the other video is my departure angle. And you're right, my departure angle sucks. It's a bus. We're on the same page. One of the things that I think trips people up about that is they assume that this is way longer than it used to be, which it's super not. It's like less than a foot longer than it used to be. The original frame of the bus is right here and the bumper wasn't on the frame. The original bumper was like somewhere out here. So I've only added like 10 to 12 inches of length overall to the bus. If you start looking at school buses or school buses like this, dog nose front engine buses, a lot of them have really serious stick outs and that's just how the world works. You can see my exhaust pipe here has suffered slightly. That's fine too. In fact, gosh, there's a weld crack right here where I was driving into a hot springs with uh, my friends Alyssa and Alex. Shout out to Alyssa and Alex. And we tried to go over a big berm. Sometimes I hit the ground with a generator. Sometimes I hit the ground with a bumper. For the most part, you know, big potholes, weird turns, weird dips in the road, weird, uh, you know, berms and stuff. Like, you can navigate it. It's more about knowing how to approach things, which side of the road to be on, avoiding potholes, being intentional, going slowly. Like, yeah, there are some things I'm just not gonna be able to get over, like the berm on the way into this hot spring. And then I'm gonna hit the ground and then I'm gonna back out. It's been all right really don't want any comments on this video. Comments are the enemy. A bunch of cleaning stuff, trash bags, tiki lanterns, a blowtorch, spare fuel. Takes up space, but you gotta have, or I choose to have. Another fun addition up here is I made these sort of grid panels for my storage boxes where junk can go. As soon as you have a storage space, it gets all full of junk in boxes or 
buckets or crates or whatever. And so I'm always trying to take the stuff that's just in a bucket in the storage space and give that stuff somewhere else to live so there's not a bucket of junk in my storage space. A lot of comments last time, a lot of comments last time about how I don't have a toilet. Surprise, I do have a toilet. It's just a composting toilet. This is a Boxio toilet, composting toilet. And it works great, and I hardly ever use it because I hardly ever need to. Most of the time with this rig, I'm either far enough out in the woods where I don't need to find a toilet. I just, you know, get one of my shovels out and make one. Or I'm not in the woods at all, and I can find a toilet with a flush lever on it somewhere, and I use that. My mom and I made a new canopy roof system for back here. You probably recall from last summer, I have the one that's a full tent with walls and screen windows and everything else. The thing about that one is that it doesn't hold as tight as it needs to to perfectly shed the water when it rains. And especially if I'm in snow or hail, it will sag the roof down and melt and create sort of puddles on the roof of the canopy, which is not great, it doesn't shed the water. So we made a new one that is just the roof. It goes over these cables where the other one hangs under it. So I can put them both up at the same time. And the one that's just the roof has tent poles in it that keep it stretched really tight all the time. The new one is a little more heavy duty, a little more rugged, and I can leave that up on the highway and drive all day and not worry about it. So one of the updates in here is that I covered this wall opposite the bed in hooks. In yet another example of things that clutter up every space, having their own place to live now. I made this step to get to the, to the roof by way of this hatch that I built. I've got uh, a little partition privacy partition that I made that pops out from here that turns the space between the bed and the door into like a little private cubby for when I've got a guest or something and one of us wants to change or bring the composting toilet inside, make sort of a little private space to use it in. Another little update, put a fan here. That was pretty clutch as I've been on the road over the course of this summer and out west and stuff. A little breeze at night is oftentimes the difference between comfort and not comfort. And also I found that I like the noise the fan makes. So yeah, I've got drawers in the galley now for all my cookware and my one burner stove in here, which is fine for cooking. My fridge drawer design, a lot of people like. I replaced the handles of the fridge and then that clicks in to latches on the sides. And then you've got this whole giant handle to deal with the fridge on. This fridge has been a problem since the day I got it. And I'm a little bummed that I built a drawer spe so specifically for this fridge. I've actually, this is my second one of this fridge. I think if you have the single zone one, you're fine. But the dual zone one, the mechanism that switches the cooling between the zones and stuff, that valve sticks and freezes and doesn't have, it's just not, doesn't work right. I put my RGB LEDs in this center track finally, which I'd been really procrastinating on. Um, and hopefully soon I'll get around to writing the code that I need to write to get that integrated to the touch screens and so I can control it from my phone and all the stuff that everybody loves. But yeah, in the meantime, it's nice just to be able to have a little bit of cozy light instead of the full blast light that comes off those white strips. This isn't anything fancy. This is just, you know, my everyday, my EDC toolbox, just sort of the basics. Nothing special, just... If you're, you're really slumming it, if you're coming into this toolbox, there's just, just really the necessities. So these panels are new. There's a four channel speaker system with two subwoofers installed in here. And there's some heating infrastructure beside the driver's seat. All my Victron system is in a cabinet now and enclosed and hidden away instead of exposed where the passenger can hit it with their knees. And then on this side, it's audio system and other electronics stored in there and well, installed in there, I should say. That's the highlights. That's the pretty much the new stuff since the last time we shot together. But I guess we probably ought to answer some questions. Are you OCD? I don't think so. Uh, I don't feel OCD. I hadn't really thought about that until now. And I'm just, if in the comments on this video, if people could share links and stuff to how I would find out that might be good, that might be useful to me. Are you Batman? My lawyer told me I'm not supposed to say I'm Batman. Hey, your dad worked on an oil refinery. At an, on an oil rig, yeah. Could you make one? Um, no, no. When the world ends and there's no more diesel, I'm screwed. Are you happy now? How do you feel about rust? Rust is fine. I'm from the East Coast, like, you get used to it. 
like vehicles have rust. Just because there is rust on something doesn't mean that it's going to fail this winter or next winter. It's just a problem you manage like anything else. A lot of people from the Southwest think that rust is the end of the world. And yeah, it makes the vehicle harder to work on and stuff like that, but it's fine. Like, yeah, some of the bus is rusty. It's going to be fine. Are you working on a, um, a special government project? No, it's not a government project, no. Um, all the things that I'm working on are for extra government entities. Sorry. Can you tell me more about what systems integrations are and why it pleases you so much? In all of the th projects that I've worked on and the jobs that I've had, a big part of them has been getting a bunch of things to become one thing, either in the context of a performance of some kind where all the moving parts have to come together and act as one to put on a show, or a, a machine of some kind where all the parts of the machine have to work together right for it to be one machine. In the case of the bus, it has a bunch of different things in it. It has a plumbing system, it has HVAC or refrigeration or electrical or fluids in tanks to manage and pumps and everything else. Bringing all of those things together to create sort of one system that I interact with. Sitting here on the therapy couch answering your interview questions, it's now occurring to me that maybe part of that is because as an only child, I had to deal with things and figure things out, solve the problem myself. And by integrating systems into one system, I can make a system that I can operate by myself more easily. What does your mom do for work? Um, before I was born, my mom was a social worker. At the time I was born, forgive me mom if I'm getting some of these details wrong, she sort of became a stay-at-home mom, but one of the things she did while she was staying at home was a lot of sewing and quilting. And so for the whole time I was young, that was going on at home. She made a lot of sewn goods and quilted goods. Later in my life, once I was starting to go to school, high school, stuff like that, she started teaching classes and doing group stuff in the sewing and quilting arts. My dad has done so many things for work. He's worked on boats, both physically on a boat as a deckhand uh, and working on boats, installing below the waterline fittings on sailboats pre-delivery. He's been a roughneck on an oil rig in Wyoming. He has worked as an electrician on a traveling museum train. Uh, he has, uh, he's worked, he worked at the Cog Railway for a lot of summers for a period of time in the 70s and then came back for a period of time in the 80s and worked as an engineer, worked on the track crew, uh, became the track crew foreman, became a manager. Um, and then left the COG and went into hospitality and was involved with a local hotel here in the area for a long time and then retired from that, I don't know, some time ago before I went to high school. How many hours do you have into the bus build? Into the bus build, man, try to come up with an estimate. I don't know, we'll say 750 hours a year on average for the last five years, so a lot. Talking to just so many other builders and so many other bus owners and conversion people who are converting ambulances and vans and boats and buses and all manner of thing. And the thing that we all have in common that I think I really, the thing that brought me here is the problem solving thing. Like you could find a welder or a plumber or an electrician who is one of the best in their field and still could not get their head around the oddball specific stuff that you need to do to solve those problems in the context of like a custom vehicle conversion. And so the people that you meet on the road who are doing those things are the people who can see it differently, see the problem differently, reframe it, solve it, know the rules before they break them, and make the systems work together. And so I'm coming at that from a systems integration perspective, and that results in a bus like mine, maybe. Um, but the thing that I identify with in other creators and other builders and other makers and other people who convert vehicles or live in them is that lens that they're looking at the world through of like, I've, I'm gonna solve this problem. It's just a question of how and how many times, how many attempts does it take? How many different things do I have to try before I find the thing that works? So we're all the same, just a bunch of nerds. I've been on a few short trips up and down the eastern seaboard, Delaware, Maine, a few things like that, um, around New York, uh, the Adirondacks. Um, but then earlier this summer, I did a 9,000 mile trip out to the west coast and back, out to Oregon. So that was through hauling ass as fast as I could 
to Colorado and then meandering around, camping with friends in Colorado, and then caravan through Idaho up to Oregon, went to the bus fair. Emma Builds Burby was rolling with us for a while. That was great. Regretless, Alyssa. Um, she and I caravan together for a while, and she and I and Alex caravan together for a while. Justin, you were there. Uh, so that was a fun trip into the Boise airport. <laughs> um, picked Justin up at the Boise airport and brought Justin along. I'm in. We got him. The package is secure. We had Bart with us uh, rolling into bus fare. Devin and Bree were there. Chuck was there. Van was there. Boy, I just, I'm gonna fail to name a bunch of bunch of people, but gang was all there. Yeah, had a real blast, honestly. Could you tell me in 10 words what your bus is? Mobile shop, tiny house, adventure rig, but just my bus. My bus is a little of everything. It's truck to go to Home Depot in, to go to the steel store and buy a whole rack of steel for a project, or to put the tent on the back and use it as a camping rig, or to go on and live out of on the road for months at a time, or to load up with tools and equipment and take the shop on the road and go do some big project somewhere else. It is all of those things because I'm looking for something that solves all of those problems. That's the interesting part to me is making the thing that does all those things. I've just always been someone who builds things for fun um, and all of the skills that I used to build this rig are skills that I've taught myself. I have no formal training in welding. I have only borderline formal training in engineering. My degree is in, technically it's in information technology. I was a wide ranging program and I studied IT for arts and performance, a lot of show control and technology integration for stage and theatrical use. Um, and so in doing that, I got exposed to a lot of improvisational construction techniques, a lot of electrical work, a lot of stage work, a lot of uh, mechanical and machinery work, uh, fabrication and machining and building things and welding and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But never formally trained in any of those things. Just uh, audacious. Thanks for watching. I've been Gordo. Gordo from Earth on Instagram or subscribe to the YouTube channel that I have with no videos on it because maybe someday, maybe someday. And subscribe to this channel and subscribe to all my friends linked in the description. Like every goddamn thing your friends post because why not? It's free. Like everything, always. It's social media.